right? Yeah, and the government's calling for more accountability from the post office, but not the police. What? Well, that's like letting Gary Busey take care of your kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, like, you know Gary's gonna do drugs, but you wind up putting cameras on the kids instead, right? Just in case they have some extra stuff. <laughs> And welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you are probably going to hear some background laughter in this episode, and that is from real people that are in the virtual audience for this show. Uh, every single Friday, almost every single Friday, uh, I do these shows called the Citizen Revolution Shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles. Uh, so if you want to be a part of this show, you can do so by grabbing tickets right off of my website for the next one. They happen on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and tickets are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you can uh, become a sustaining member. You can make a one-time donation. Uh, you can download my albums. You can check out past videos. It's the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. And uh, by becoming a sustaining member, a big thing that you do is by is help shows like this, help help all of the, the shows that I do, uh, Forkful of Noodles, Taboo Table Talk, The Dispatches, The Road Reflections, everything you see on this channel. And you get free tickets to be a part of the live virtual audience uh, for the Citizen Revolution show. Uh, sustaining members never have to pay for a ticket. They have access to every single show. Uh, so once again, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -A -A. Now on to the episode. The United States Postal Service, right? Before everybody yawns and goes to bed at the thought of a show surrounding mail, uh, <laughs> I, I will promise you that this show will be as interesting as a show written about the Federal Reserve. Oh, oh I can hardly wait. <laughs> okay, that's a bad that's a bad example, but it's but it's still like a, a more interesting topic than what people think it's going to be. <laughs> but this summer, the entire country saw the Postal Service get gutted, and if you only pay attention to any of the news surrounding the post office and missed everything in the last one hundred years you would think that Trump was the only person trying to attack them, right? Just like most people thought that Trump invented racism or <laughs> wanting to sleep with a porn star or overusing the word terrific, right? Or boasting about how great their dick works at 70. <laughs> <laughs> Look, America is a 300 something year old country that has been racist since its inception, always wanted to fuck porn stars, but kind of had to settle, and had been, has been bragging about its dick since it learned the word military. <laughs> <laughs> and Trump is a symptom of the American disease, which is narcissism mixed with erectile dysfunction. That's the American <laughs> disease. And besides, let's be honest, if Trump had invented militarism or racism or xenophobia or authoritarianism, they would have all gone bankrupt by 1992. <laughs> Which, not that bad, right? You kind of wish he had invented those things. <laughs> so they, we wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. And look, I'll be honest myself, I particularly haven't been pay paying attention to what's been happening with the Postal Service either, right? No one cared how the mail was sorted and delivered. You know, people don't really care how the sausage is made, so they definitely didn't care about how it was mailed to you. Or why people are mailing sausages. It's a weird thing to mail. <laughs> 
shouldn't be mailing meats. But, but no one really started paying attention to the post office until this pandemic started, and Trump appointed a new postmaster general, Louis DeJoy, who wanted to completely destroy the service, right? DeJoy was set to cut pay decrease services at the post office, uh, the, the services that the post office offers, wanted to take away mailboxes, and finally prove that the Republican Party is just the Legion of Doom wearing suits. <laughs> and, and come on, uh, are we really surprised that someone named DeJoy is trying to destroy the service that sends, you know, presents and letters from our grandma's you know, guys, his name literally translates to removing joy. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look at the beginning of this pandemic, uh, the previous postmaster general, Megan Brennan, requested $75 million, billion in stimulus, right? $25 billion for immediate use to pay employees, keep them safe and the services active and the rest to use over time to keep the post offices running. The president of the American Postal Union said this, was, this amount was absolutely necessary since about 12,000 postal employees have gotten sick due to COVID-19 and 64 others have died. But the Democratic controlled House approved a $10 billion stimulus for the United States Postal Service, once again claiming that the Republicans would block it if it was any higher. You know what's funny is that you never hear the Republicans say anything like this, right? You never hear Republicans come out and be like, boy, you know, we'd like to control women's bodies, but, you know, the Democrats might say something mean about it. <laughs> you, know, just, you just never hear them. Like, there is no reason that the Democrats shouldn't have fought harder to expand funding for the Postal Service. Right? I mean, let's get serious, guys. This is the Postal Service. It's not the American working class. They could have fought a little harder. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> now, the reason why the Postal Service is in bad financial shape is due to a 2006 Bush administration bill that was written by two Republicans and two Democrats called the Postal Accountability Enhancement Act, or P-A-E-A. -E this piece of legislation made the Postal Service pre-fund retirement for all of its current and future retirees for 75 years. And this included any employee that would eventually be hired. Literally no other department or corporation has any kind of plan like this. This is the most insane piece of legislation that's ever been written. <laughs> mm. Right, yeah, and the government's calling for more accountability from the post office, but not the police? What? That's like letting Gary Busey take care of your kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, like, you know Gary's gonna do drugs, but you wind up putting cameras on the kids instead, right? Just in case they have some extra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Meanwhile, Busey's kidnapped the dog, eaten everything in your pantry, and somehow sold your refrigerator that came with the house. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 2006, most Congress people voted to approve the PAEA, including Bernie Sanders. Right? Only one Democrat and about 20 Republicans voted against this pre-funding plan. This consistently put the Postal Service in debt over $5 billion every year since 2006 in order to meet this requirement. And this was after the Postal Service was netting a profit of $9.3 billion every year between 2003 and 2006. Now, when people asked where this pre-funding money was going to come from, Congress just responded, I don't know, bootstraps. <laughs> Sounds like something we can do. Yeah, socialism only works for capitalism when it's trying to dismantle the necessities, doesn't it? Look, if Congress 
is going to approve the Postal Service to pre-fund universal retirement, then I think it's only fair that Dick Cheney and the entire Bush dynasty should pre-fund health care for everyone that is alive, has died, will be dead, and born for the next 75 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, George Bush can use the money he gets from his, uh, his painting. Finger paints. <laughs> <laughs> he's releasing a book of immigrants that he's painted that has meant, meant things in his life. God, it's are they all, out next is, it, year. is it all immigrants from Sweden? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> that's, that's where they're all from. He's gotten better at painting. Look, I think, I think there's, there, there's, he's gotten better at painting. <laughs> Is he better at painting than he is at war crimes? We'll never know. Uh, <laughs> because no one is going to try him for that. <laughs> it's either George Bush's paintings that are going to uh, pay for the pre-funded health care initiative or more bootstraps. <laughs> Those are our options. <laughs> In June of 2020, uh, Trump appointed Louis DeJoy as the Postmaster General. Now he is what, uh, the first Postmaster General in decades with no prior experience in the Postal Service, right? This is basically like saying Tom Hanks should run the Postal Service because he played a FedEx employee in the film Castaway. <laughs> <laughs> in completely unrelated news though, I, I, I just found out this morning, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, uh, but Carrot Top has now been appointed as the Secretary of Defense. <laughs> Because why not? <laughs> now, uh, DeJoy has said that the postal workers should, quote, adopt a different mindset. Yes, and, and he's absolutely right, right? They should adopt a different mindset, a mindset where, you know, you're not going to be able to, like, eat or, like, be alive. You know, a, a mindset where you're not as much postal workers, but more of a postal slave, you know, you're, you're Django unmailed, if you will. Oh, come on. That's a pretty good one. I was pretty excited about that when I thought of this this afternoon. <laughs> that's, that's not that bad. <laughs> now, DeJoy is the former vice president of a multinational supply chain logistics and shipping corporation called XPO Logistics. Not only should this be a major red flag that he was the vice president of a shipping company and now is in charge of the Postal Service, but also his company's name was completely unimaginative, right? XPO Logistic, who gives a shit? Now you could have named it Land, Air, and Sea Corporation or Last Corp. That is a great ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> I might have missed my call in marketing. <laughs> <I might have. laughs> but the reddest of all red flags should be the fact that he graduated from Stetson University in Central Florida. Folks, do we really want a Floridian to be in charge of a major mail service? <laughs> <laughs> I say nay. <laughs> nay, I say. <laughs> Now, he's also the, uh, the president of LTJ Global, which is a corporation interested in real estate, private equity, consulting, and project management. By the way, project management is the communications degree of job titles. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what you tell people at parties when you don't want to talk to them anymore, right? Like, what do you do? Oh, I'm in project management. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 no one can really answer that question. <laughs> what kind of projects do you manage? <laughs> now, the major controversy surrounding DeJoy is the fact that he is a major donor to the Republican Party, right? Helping George W. get reelected, and he contributed over $27,000 to Jeb Bush in 2016, right? He didn't even pick a winner in 2016, you guys. But with his ties to the Bush brothers 
and a private logistics and delivery co uh, company. It's very clear that this is a corporate coup to try to privatize the United States Postal Service. Now, a major reason to defund the Postal Service, according to Donald Trump, is mail-in voting, which is primarily handled by the Postal Service. No, no other shipping or logistics company can handle something like this. And Trump claims that if people vote via mail, there is a higher risk of fraud. And when asked for specifics, he just gave everybody the finger <laughs> as he screamed fake news and a Secret Service member threw a smoke bomb and whisked him away to a bunker where no mailman can ever find him. <laughs> Look, let's let's be honest. We're dealing with the American election system, right? So no matter what way you vote, it's not going to be a perfect system. And mail-in voting is no different. It's not without its problems, right? Like, there's a lot of questions you need to answer. Like, do we need extra stamps if we're voting for a socialist? <laughs> <laughs> We don't know. No one's been able to answer that question for me. And I have been calling a lot. <laughs> but it's far more secure than, I don't know, say gerrymandering states with districts that literally looked like a blurred out penis. <laughs> <laughs> It's far more secure than interstate cross-check, which is a system that removes voters of the same last name in different states. And it's far safer than black box voting machines with proprietary coding. Not just that, but going to the polls during a voracious pandemic is wildly irresponsible, right? Most poll workers are elderly folks. And sure, you could say that this should encourage more younger folks to get involved in poll work, right? Get involved in the election. And my retort to that would be to have fucking younger candidates that the youth can actually be excited about instead of two people <laughs> racist gas bags. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, bolstering the Postal Service is absolutely necessary and the stimulus request is reasonable since the use of mail is pertinent for people to order food pay their bills and get medication right 80 percent 80 percent of prescription medications from the va is delivered by the postal service look if we could email each other drugs <laughs> <laughs> go with me on this yeah. I feel like Big Pharma would have partnered with Gmail years ago, <laughs> right? Like, like, instead of Nigerian princes trying to hack our emails, it would have just been all of our cousin Ricky's. <laughs> <laughs> just, just trying to score some extra digital Valium. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be that bad. And sidebar... Sidebar, yes, Indian people can have cousins named Ricky too, okay? <laughs> Look, if the most notable Indian American politicians are named Bobby Jindal and Nikki Haley, I'm sure this fictional drug-addicted cousin I made up can go by Ricky, <laughs> all right? Got me there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And he's got a backstory, okay? He was picked on in high school and he needed a white sounding name to get reelected in South Carolina. So, <laughs> I feel like it makes sense. I feel like it checks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the Postal Service today is just as important as it was during its inception, right? When the nation was expanding westward, California was basically an island on its own. And thanks to the Postal Service, the East and the West were able to communicate with each other, just like Chris Rock and Jackie Chan in the hit film Rush Hour and Rush Hour 2. <laughs> Clearly a metaphor for the Postal Service. <laughs> now, first thing that new towns would do would be to establish a post office. The idea was to create equality between small towns and big cities so that they would have the same amenities, right? No one's getting left behind here. 
Now, newspapers were shipped for free by the Postal Service. In one week's time, someone in California could know what's going on in the city of Boston. I mean, in the 1700s and 1800s, that was basically like having 4G on your phone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a pretty big deal back then and all this stuff the newspaper was shipped for free right and in the 19 month gap to expand the telegraph lines the pony express would deliver mail across the country in a matter of 10 days and it was so important to deliver the mail that america developed postal roads which were pretty much like early highways they were the they were they were the before times highways is what they were so without the Postal Service, Frontiers people would have been isolated, remained ignorant to the nation's concerns, and we wouldn't have highways, right? The Postal Service determined major modern conveniences, just like porn determines the pace of technology today. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really think about it, the Postal Service is like the porn of America. And that's why I'm doing this show with no pants on <laughs> in honor of the postal service you guys in honor of the postal service now throughout august uh there were activists that organized protests outside DeJoy's north carolina and washington dc mansions look you can't represent the working class if you have more than one mansion <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that would basically be like Tom Hanks representing the NAACP. <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> now, at this point, uh, when, when we're doing the show, at this point, DeJoy said that he won't be putting any of these heavier restrictions on the service till the election is done. And the Democrats have come back from vacation to fund the Postal Service the $25 billion they asked for back in March. And look, I'm not against this, right? I'm all for this. I'm all for funding the United States Postal Service. We need this. But let's be honest, this kind of feels like posturing because we have elections coming up in terms of Democrats, right? I mean, if they were truly, truly for keeping the service active, they would have fought to get them the $25 billion at the least back in March, right? And this is another example of how activism protests and amplification can get legislation to swing in the right direction. The United States Postal Service is an American institution that made this country what it is. And any attempts to destroy, defund, or detract from this service should be seen as un-American. Louis DeJoy is a disgrace to all previous Postmaster Generals, including Ben Franklin, who was America's first Postmaster General. DeJoy is definitely not as funny or as sexy as Ben Franklin. <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. Ben Franklin sent the first dick pics across the country. Let's be honest. That's what he did. <laughs> but we should be paying attention to what is going on with the postal, postal Service, right? And how it continues to benefit our lives despite all of the manufactured challenges it faces. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, please give it a like. Please give it a share. Uh, and uh, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, whether you're watching this on Facebook, whether you're watching this on my website, whether you are watching this on the YouTubes or on Rockfin. Uh, if you're watching this on Rockfin.com, awesome. You are part of the blockchain cryptocurrency ad-free site which acts like Netflix for content creators, where for $10 a month, you get all of the premium content from all of the content creators that are on Rockfin. Content creators like Ron Placone, Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore. Uh, you got Kim Iverson, Nico House, The Convo Couch, and so, so many more, uh, including myself. So if you are tired of the, the mainstream uh, content creation sites like YouTube and Facebook, then head on over to Rockfin and follow me there. Become a subscriber. Uh, if you can. If not, that's totally cool too. Uh, you can find all of my stuff available right on my website, uh, krishmohanhaha.com, which is the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. Uh, past episodes of this show, you can get tickets for my live virtual stand-up comedy shows. 
uh, and the actual live shows when touring starts back up again. Um, not only that, but you can also go to the donate page and become a sustaining member. Sustaining members get uh, additional stand-up comedy content and free tickets to the live virtual stand-up comedy shows. So if you want to do that and if you have the funds to do that, I hope that you do. Uh, and uh, uh, once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next